Well, welcome everyone. Um, we're going to be doing a brief introduction to Chinese medicine and then uh, highlight some different kanjis that work on a variety of uh, health topics and uh, things to help with uh, various ailments or just well-being for you. So in the beginning, um, long ago, there are physicians in China developed a complete medical system that's based on holistic concept of the human body. And this was done through meticulous observation and documentation over hundreds of years. The patterns were seen, treatments devised, revised, and the similarities between the seasons, properties of our environment, they're all correlated to us as well. And our body is like a garden. You know, it requires a certain balance of life-giving energies in order to maintain our health. Um, so when Chinese medicine looks at the body, we're not just a bunch of different parts stuck together. The body's a whole and everything is interconnected. When one system is out of balance, other systems try to help out. Or if they're not able to support the other, it also will become out of balance. Um, and then they pull on other systems more and you have that imbalance can lead to ill health. Yet, when you bring it back in balance and you give those systems what they need, uh, healing is able to happen and everything is able to come back. So, when we look at that, um, the, philosophy, the Chinese philosophy and healing is founded on some specific theories and principles that are unique to Chinese medicine um, in which health has been maintained uh, as long as there's abundant supply and free flowing of life energy and that's the qi and these energies include blood, qi, yin and other uh, blood, qi, yin and other vital substances ebb and flow throughout the body um, so, oh, go back, go back to the other slide, thanks. So with this one, when we're looking at this language, yin, yang, qi, jin, jing, um, shen, so looking at the the way our body is with the garden the yin describes the substances within our body the blood the fluids the actual substance that makes up the matter of our organs and systems in a way it can correlate to the western version of anatomy of us the yang is the function of those substances and in a way you can correlate that in its similarity to uh, western physiology of organs and systems of the body the functions and workings of that organ and system is the yang of that system. Uh, then you have the qi, the life force of the organ system that flows through the channels and is also unique to that organ system. We have many forms of qi in our body that will definitely be discussed in a future presentation down the road. Um, then um, we have our jing. jing is essence. Uh, one is said that we can be born with a fixed amount of jing uh, and we can also acquire jing from food and various forms of like exercise, study, meditation. Uh, we can consume our jing in life by stress, illness, abuse, uh, the, the you know things that come with daily life. Uh, we have a prenatal jing that we're born with and we don't necessarily uh, we don't make more of and that there's been there's theory where when that gene is completely consumed up that's when one passes and then our shen is our spirit uh, some say this shen is also uh, correlated uh, the word can be con conceived as god and it's like the it's our spirit within, you know? Uh, so they look at spirit, energy, essence, you know, a bit different than Western. So we have these different terms that describe different aspects of that spirit within us. Um, 
and within our body, uh, we have, they talk about weather reports. When, just like our weather, like I was mentioning earlier, the correlation between the seasons and our environment are also within us. Um, sometimes with, we have damp and that's like a fluid, right? It's damp and um, it's not uh, moving necessarily or where it's supposed to be. And that damp is very much uh, correlated to like sometimes when it's damp outside, your joints might hurt. Um, or there's dryness, just like our dry air in the dry desert. Sometimes we'll have a dryness, we have dry eyes, dry hair, dry skin, um, dry cough. Um, and then there's heat, like a fever is a heat. Um, you can have different kinds of heat, a heat from a deficiency where there's not enough of something that creates a heat, just like when there's not enough water on the stove, it, it burns off quicker you know, when that fire's going and there's that heat, or you can have excess heat. Uh, so that's some of these ways in which we would, we talk of these, um, these parts and aspects of our body in those terms, because that was the, one of the best ways to relate uh, what was happening um, and make sense of it, especially when discussing it with the people they were treating in the rural areas and people at the time. So next we look at yin and yang, uh, and this is, this is one of those basic concepts you hear a lot about, but don't all, you know, it's like, what exactly is that? Um, it's one of the most well-known symbols and fundamental principles of TCM, uh, it, and you, you see it everywhere, uh, and you have these mutually dependent opposites. You cannot have one without the other. You have the yin which you know, is the essence and you have the yang, which is the, the, the movement of that essence. And here are some different, uh, some other different aspects we look at with yin and yang. You have the yin is the front and the yang is the back. Yin is the interior where yang is your exterior. Uh, the yin is the abdomen, the chest, the yang, the skin, the muscles, the, the structure versus the function the cold versus the hot, the light versus, well, the yin is the dark, the yang is the light. You can't have dark without light. Um, you have water, you have fire, you have downward moving, you have upward moving. Um, so this is just a, a list of some different aspects of that. Uh, they are always with one, you always have the other, and it is in having a balance between the two when you have health. So if you have too much yin, there's a challenge, or too much yang versus also not enough of one or the other. So this is something we always look at in someone's health, and food, exercise, nutrition, diet, lifestyle, all help to balance those the yin and the yang. Okay. The next slide I think is on chi. Yes. This chi is not really described in an English word so much, but you know it is that life force, that energy that gives us, that enlivens us, animates us. Um, when we have chi, we can do those daily activities and tasks. Uh, when we have chi, we are able to, it allows for our health, allows for our well being. Um, it's the, the vital energy and source within all of our cells and all of our our body so each organ system has its own chi um it's uh and the chi allows for a lot of different activities so uh yes we provide our the chi helps to bring in the nourishment 
uh, for every cell. We, our spleen chi allows for transforming and transporting of our nutrients. Uh, the chi that flows, liver chi and kidney chi helps to warm the body. Our lung chi, kidney chi helps to protect and defend. Uh, you know, within our spleen chi, we and other chi of our body, it can help hold things in where they're supposed to be, retain what's supposed to be where it is. Um, and when our chi is balanced and sufficient and flowing, we have good health. When our when our chi does not flow and it gets stagnant and it's not moving then we have imbalance and in health. If we have no chi, we do not have a good life. <laughs> um, so um, the health of our chi, even though it's not really recognized in Western medicine, is really vital and it's an important part to our well-being. Um, uh, traditional Chinese medicine has mapped out a series of pathways in the body, and these pathways, oops, we got the same slide again. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. We're going to look at how the chi travels through the body. This is uh, this is really a good one and important. So, with our chi, it has a flow. When we talk about this, when we look at uh, Chinese medicine, the clock. So, uh, 3 a.m. to 5 a.m., our chi is um, it's most our lung chi is most concentrated and most, uh, um, it's like the time for the lungs is from 3 a.m. to 5 a.m. And then that chi, the lung chi turns into, moves through with large intestine chi. And that's, you know, your large intestine and it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, a lot of times this is when um, people are waking and starting to move between that 5 to 7 a.m. they'll have a bowel movement. Um, then we move on to stomach chi, which is from 7 to 9. Uh, and you'll know like breakfast time, you want to make sure you have that breakfast before this time or during this time or before this time. Um, and this is when the chi is mostly condensed in the stomach. And there's this pattern and flow from lungs to large intestine, spleen or stomach to spleen then heart to small intestine, the bladder to the kidneys, the pericardium to what we call the triple warmer or the San Jiao, and that is the waterworks of the whole middle body, um, like your, your torso area. The, there's a lot of things that move and flow through there, and the triple warmer, otherwise known as San Jiao, uh, controls the the flow of the water and the fluids in that region um, and really important not necessarily recognized so much um, in other uh, medical disciplines but in here from the pericardium the protector of the heart that energy then goes to that flow of our you know our whole torso our whole core into the gallbladder the liver by 1 to 3 a.m. and then back up to the lungs. It's ever flowing, ever cycling, ever moving. What's the next? Yeah, what happens when our chi is blocked? Because we can have a lot of different things block our chi. Um, when our chi is blocked, then we have we have more challenges. The plant doesn't get watered. Um, the nutrients don't get to where they're trying to go. Uh, when the chi is blocked, you might start to have, like with liver chi, you notice that the irritability is more, your frustrations are growing. Um, and uh, there's that free flow gets obstructed and the, the balance starts to sway. And when that happens, then we start to get ill health, which leads to uh, long enough, the flowers of us not making it because we'll get sick some way or another. Um, so, 
so with that you know we we want to have a nice healthy lifestyle we have a few maybe we put, i know they're popping up but we're just going to put them all up at the same time i think um they should all pull up we have all different aspects of our lifestyle really affect us as a whole whether it's our environment and what we choose to allow into our environment the food that we eat the people we keep around us um, are we grounding in nature are we stretching and giving our body the exercise and the energy it needs um, are we choosing to focus on the positive or are we harping on the negative in life because those things that we decide we're going to focus on are what we're feeding ourselves and what and how we're going to grow do we want to grow in recognizing okay that didn't go so well and instead of harping on all of the negative figure out what can i do to make that better how can i keep that from happening again okay and with food you know it's like oh i'm so worn out i'm so stressed let me i want that cookie i want that beer but maybe instead it's like is that gonna how good is that going to be for me maybe instead i'm craving something sweet let me have a sweet kanji um that i made already and it's waiting for me in the fridge i can just warm it up let me have that warm cinnamon tea instead let me have that way chi building tea i learned about um you know and maybe i could reach out and just say hello to the person and forget all of my insecurities about why they may not want to talk to me and just reach out because i care about them you know all these aspects of fresh air the people all play a huge role in our well-being and our health and now now we get to look at some kanjis and how they can help kanjis are super cool i don't have a lot of energy or a lot of time i try to keep my chi and i keep trying to build my chi so i love kanjis and um you can use kanjis for a variety of different things they're amazing so whether you need to build up clear heat or tonify you can always do something in a kanji and it doesn't take a lot of work doesn't take a lot of effort and even my picky eater kids will eat it um will eat a lot of these so i love them usually most often kanjis are made with rice uh, and it's in western terms if you know about porridge you know about kanji i think just about every culture has some form of a kanji of their own they just might call it something different. So here we're looking at a few, we'll look at many different kanjis that we made with recipes and some videos for you. I chose to do one that's a little different. I chose a, I chose a barley based kanji. I think we're gonna have a picture of it. Yeah, I did a sweet barley and long yon ro kanji. Uh, and this kanji, what is good for tonifying your chi and blood it helps build blood drain damp um, and it's a really good tonifying kanji this is not one i would take if i thought i was coming down with a cold or was getting sick because when you have that tonifying as lauren had talked about earlier it can help drive things bring things in because we tonify from deep within us so when we have that cold we want to push the pathogen out um, and so we have stuff that helps us to get that out and but that's why it's so beautiful we have things to nourish and tonify and build from deep within and we have stuff to protect us and move things out so this one is one of those warm tonifying even though it's summer this is good in the winter i still always love it because i'm always needing to build my blood okay so what's next here is my ingredients one cup of barley five cups of water one tablespoon molasses one tablespoon of honey nine pieces of long yon roe a teaspoon of nutmeg a teaspoon of cinnamon now sometimes i also add walnuts um, 
and there you can you can add to this as well you know if there's something else um i usually would add walnuts and maybe or maybe some blueberries at the end uh all these ingredients you're going to cook in the crock pot and i cooked it on low for two hours and i turned it down to warm and just let it sit it was it's on average two to four hours otherwise i put it on warm overnight wake up in the morning and it's good so it's yeah, delicious to eat warm or cold and we have some properties of these uh, ingredients the barley is neutral and sweet um, it's neutral that's its temperature it's not hot or cold its taste is sweet and salty it tonifies chi blood and yin drains damp it resolves water accumulation so that's that whole middle jowl that whole sand gel area I was talking about a lot of times water might accumulate it helps to remove that and it helps to eliminate toxins molasses yum there is something good for certain sweets um, it's warm you don't need a lot of it it's sweet and it tonifies chi and blood honey another yummy sweet one is neutral sweet it tonifies chi and yin or the yin is that that substance right that fluid and substance of our body that we need to have uh, honey helps to regulate the blood and also eliminate toxins long yang ro i love this if you don't have this a lot of times people will use dates also but i get this at the local chinese market long yang ro delicious it's warm uh property is warm it's sweet and it tonifies the blood uh, it nourishes the blood and calms the spirit. Nutmeg is so good. It's warm and pungent and it tonifies the yang. It tonifies qi, circulates the blood and helps disperse the cold. And then cinnamon is hot. It's sweet and pungent and it's tonifi it tonifies the qi and the yang also. So you notice that both the nutmeg and cinnamon tonify the yang, which is that, and you see that hot and that warm and they both circulate, it's that movement, you know? So it helps circulate blood, disperse the cold, and it helps to dry damp. And then we have a video to show you, um, and I have some references. Easy kanji to prepare at home, even with the kids in the background, tonifying chi and blood. Love this kanji. Today, we're gonna make a blood building kanji that I love to use barley with because it also helps to drain damp. Okay, so of course, we're gonna first start with one cup of barley, which is right here. five cups of water to go in with the barley. We also have one tablespoon of molasses, which is warm and sweet. Also, it is really good for tonifying blood. I also add a tablespoon of raw honey, which is, uh, which tonifies the uh, ton of ice chi yin regulates blood helps eliminate toxins it is definitely sweet um, and its properties are neutral and then after the honey i'm going to uh, add just a little bit of nutmeg one teaspoon of nutmeg which helps tonify the chi circulate blood it tonifies yang since we have a lot of yin tonifying from the barley and um, and the honey, both tonifying the end. Uh, um, we have long yang ro, which are adding eight pieces, which tonify and um, tonify the blood and nourish the blood, calm the spirit. It's uh, it's, it's warm and sweet, uh, so. It's always good. It helps goes to the spleen and heart. That's how it calms the spirit and tonifying the blood. And lastly, cinnamon is added. One teaspoon. 
Then the kanji will be cooked on low, low for two hours and on warm for four to even six hours. It's delicious, both warm and cold for great tasting sweet kanji. Well, thank you for joining me in looking at the introductions to Chinese medicine and that kanji. And